Good evening, and welcome to Die in the Wool History Podcast. Uh, I'm your host, again. Um, so, first off, I know some of y'all are waiting on the uh, next Texas History video, and uh, I appreciate that, um, because if you're like me, you're always wanting to learn learn more and, and learn more about Texas, right, especially if you live in Texas. Um, however, I'm going to pause on the Texas History. We're coming back in two weeks, I think, uh, to get some more uh, videos in. And I'm also going to pause on the uh, the Perkins video. I'm not I'm not going to pause while well, I'm still working on it currently. But I thought that today we could talk about a different topic. And it's one that's kind of more interesting. It's, it's also another aspect that I like to study uh, constantly. Um, and especially it goes along with today when, you know, we all heard about the uh, Israel war here against, uh, you know, well, Palestine uh, or the West Bank or Gaza, or, you know, whatever you want to say. Right, and so we always have this idea uh, with them that that they are the chosen people of God, right? And that's that, that that's for another interesting time. However, there are a lot of uh, things that we uh, <laughs> we hear, right? We hear a lot of it, especially in the academic world, because a lot of people, you know, that this this is the one question that they always say. Not question, sorry, statement is that the Bible was plagiarized, right? And plagiarism is kind of a, a tough word to, to think because you're, you're trying to essentially say that it was copied, right? That, that they copied it word for word um, or put their own twist on it, right? And, and, and I think that's just wrong. Um, and I don't think that's wrong. I think it's, it, it definitely is wrong. The Bible's just plagiarized. And the question, the reason is because you know, these, these motifs that they have, it, they go back 90,000 years. To say one person wrote it first and then everybody copied them, or one person was the, the, the origin, it, it's, it's tough. It really is tough because you can look at the Sumerians, right? You, you look at Enlil and Enki and you know, you know that there are uh, same characteristics, especially when it comes to Yahweh, that there are same characteristics um, between Yahweh and Enlil. You know, but definitely, definitely for sure. Right, but the problem is, is that I think that we we often mistake what uh, what we think of this in this aspect. Right, plagiarism is is hard to to ascribe, mostly because um, you just don't want to. It, it's not something that we should constantly talked about, right? And, and you got to think about this today. Think of it as as his like a historian, right? We know that Moses, right. We know that Moses was a, a, a vizier um, in the Egyptian court, right? And and we, we know that because we have, like, um, uh, what is it, Akhenaten, right? Uh, his, you know, one of one of the, the tombs around his, his own pyramid there uh, is for a Semitic, um, a Semitic person, Semitic vizier. Right, so we know that he was higher up. We know that he existed in a time where Egypt was moving towards, uh, um, you know, monotheism, right? And so <coughs> we have to look at this and say, was it plagiarism or was it something where he had access to these and he he looked at it from a historical standpoint, right? And the 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 latter part of that is is the real thing is is Moses had access to this, right? He had access to a lot of the the um, you know the earlier stories, and we could also argue that he had access to uh, if we look at like Plato's story, right? He had had access to the, uh, uh, <laughs> the the whatever came from Atlantis, I should say, that was in the uh, you know the libraries there. Um, but he was able to look at that and read that. He was fairly smart, and I know now what you're saying is, well, um, but what about the fact that Moses didn't exist and the Israelites? Uh, never were in Egypt because well, and that's that's a, a false thing too because we look at that and we go well. King Ram or Pharaoh Ramesses, right the second, he was he was good at doing what they call plagiarizing himself, right? He took he took things away. He wrote over stuff, right? So a lot of things ascribed to him isn't really his. Uh, a lot of stories that he took out, you know, did exist. However, under Akhenaten, right, we have this. Um, we have this, uh, uh, well, we have the East Coast. The East Coast, and there's another aspect, and I'm, I'm not going to say it right, and, and, you know, but I think it's the Sosa, Soas, 
um, something like that, right? There's two aspects of the the Hebrews at that time. The Hiskos were very important workers um, under the under Akhenaten. Were very important workers. They were uh, they they were there for 200 years prior. They weren't slaves, and so we could say that they definitely weren't slaves. Um, and then they were just told to leave. They were pushed out. They said leave. Right, and so we, you know, judging by the fact that the uh, Semitic vizier's tomb is empty, um, we can obviously assess the fact that Moses was real. Uh, different name, obviously, in the Egyptian court, uh, but he went, he went with them, right? And so Moses had this, uh, this thought that it was, it was seen from a, a historical standpoint, right? Then you go up to Mount Sinai, and if you go there now, before you know, before, uh, uh, you know, the Saudis tend to want to get rid of it or whatever, right? But um, if you go there now, right, you can you can see where, where there were, you know, something was set down right there, right? So he did have access to, to a whole lot more than we think he did, right? So when he wrote those, he wrote that as a historian. He was smart. Everybody then knew the story. We don't know the story, so we can say it was plagiarized because we're just we're just dumb. To be honest with you, uh, we have this idea that oh everything had to be copied because they didn't know anything else. Well, uh, that's that's not the case. That's not the case at all, right? He didn't include a lot of aspects from the original story because one, it was a history historical observation, and two, everybody then in that culture knew it and observed that anyway. Right, so they attached themselves to that culture. They founded themselves in that original story. Right, so it was it was something where when we see the switch from the Elohim to the to Yahweh, uh, well, that was that that was that story. That was the thing where we look at it and go, okay, Moses was obviously obviously smart enough to understand this. He read that, and he then was able to put together. Uh, the Old Testament in such a way that everybody could see it. It had the uh, metaphysical aspects to it. It had the real aspects to it. And, um, well, thus we, we, could, we could find law. We could find foundation. We could find order, right? We could find that divine order uh, moving forward for the Israelites. So uh, the question then when we look at that and say, well, was it plagiarized? We, we, can't, we can't be a judge of that. We, we can't be. Um, like I said, it goes back 90,000 years. When you look at it, you follow it from out of, out of Africa across, um, across the uh, you know, Saudi Arabia Peninsula into the Persian Gulf. We, we recognize that that story was carried by people who would have known how to read, right? But there was this, this great flood that happened during that Younger Dryas, even though a lot of people want to you know, talk about the idea that Grant Hancock was you know, wrong or whatever. Uh, and that's just because academics are lazy and they find money uh, in not changing stories when new events happen or new uh, evidence is shown. Um, and so we have all that time, right? Usually when we find things written down, we find things written down when society is built, right? So the Sumerians planted themselves there as close as they could, by the way, back to the Persian Gulf, where if we look at the Eden of their story or the Garden of Eden of the biblical tradition, we know that it was in the Persian Gulf, which is now it's covered. It's covered by, obviously, mud and other things like that. But we know that the riverhead is there. Uh, I think it's Andrew Dole did a great job at uh, showing that, right? Um, unfortunately, a lot of conclusions, right? We have the, the, the flood there. Um, it wasn't Noah's flood, but it was a flood because that did, that that, that wall broke in the uh, Gulf, the, uh, what is it, the... I think it's the Gulf of Omen right there. It did break, and it did start to flood and bring in salt into the uh, freshwater estuary, right, which did push everybody in that valley up and out, right? And as they kept getting pushed up and up and up and up, up into the uh, into Turkey there, when it was, you know, time to disperse and come back, the Sumerians did know and find themselves back as close as they could to where that Eden was. Um, and so... Right. Back to that is that that story was carried from the Persian Gulf all the way up through uh, Noah, right? As, as Abraham, Abraham attached him to that, attached himself to that culture, to that tradition. Um, everybody that, that preceded him did. So 
that's what we got to look at and say, well, they carried this story. Moses had access to this story. Uh, he had access to the early, earlier sources. He had access to what was told prior to that in his own culture. And he brought everything together. Um, and so, no, it's not plagiarism. The idea that the Tower of Babel is the Babylonian ziggurat, right, is even that is just, it's not enough information. It's just dumb. It's kind of a, uh, uh, I guess it's kind of just a, a, well, shoot, we need to explain something. So well, here you go, Babylonian exile. Uh, this is where it happened. That's not the case. Um, this story was built well before it. We can know that, right? Just just because we had trouble saying, you know, admitting to things uh, that just, you know, that, that challenged the mainstream. I should say, uh, this is the case, right? We need to understand that. We need to know that it wasn't plagiarized. And so I, I come back, I, I come with this one, just to kind of, I just want to get this thought out, right? Uh, and there's going to be more videos on this topic as well. This is kind of my introduction as well into this, because this is such a crucial story. Um, when you look at a lot of things, and this is why people, uh, you know, that have embarked upon the study are, are hated and they, they, they are one of they you know they try to get pushed out and that's because they they start to tell the truth they start to put stories together right when you start to put stories together guess what you start to see the reality of the situation you start to bring all this stuff together because 5600 BC or so or so is when you have that dispersion from Turkey uh, maybe a little earlier than that and that's fine um, and so you start to see that move down. You start to see all these cultures kind of show up. These languages show up, right? Uh, and guess what? They all took to their own their own way of telling that story. And so Moses really should get a, a pat on the back because he was the first person to take a version of that story and bring it together with all the other stories of, of different peoples that uh, the Egyptians had, had access to their sources, you know? And we, like I said, we can even go with the Atlantis story and... Um, it, it would have been there. Some kind of archive of that would have been there. Obviously, we know that because Plato uh, had re recalled that story. And if we look at the farthest side of Africa, and we know that the Nile ran that way at one point, um, and we have the three eccentric rings, um, guess what? We can, we can still put that together and say, well, okay, this probably uh, existed because we have evidence, and, and nobody's done a true excava excavation of that, which they should. So as we start to come together and bring this, and I'm introducing this topic for that specific reason, um, let's start to see this, this new aspect of the biblical story, that uh, the Sumerian story. Let's bring that together in ourselves and uh, fully understand what it is that we believe, what it is that we founded ourselves on. Um, and so there you go. 13 minutes, an introduction real quickly. Uh, but I look forward to talking about this subject with other people um and who knows i might just bring another co-host on here um to further explain and, and just ask questions and 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 see where we go with that but we, we this is that 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 idea that i love to contemplate i love to talk about um so myth mythology is something that really really intrigues me a lot so anyway that's my short for you uh, on Die in the Wool History Podcast. Uh, thank you for listening, if you do listen in. Um, and I appreciate that. And uh, cheers. Have a good evening.